the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Hello, welcome to the SEO Growth Podcast. This is a new podcast by Flying Cat Marketing. I will be your host, Amila Divela, Marketing Manager here at Flying Cat. And together I'm joined with uh, Maeva Cifuentes, who is the CEO and founder of Flying Cat. Hi, Maeva, how are you doing? Hey, Mila, I'm doing so good. I'm excited to be here with you today. How are you? Oh, good. I'm like very excited. We actually, for, for the flying fans, uh, we actually recorded this before, our, at least uh, episode one, but then we didn't like uh, the content because there was a, like another a better topic that we wanted to address for the first episode because it needs to be like a great topic, right? Yes. And after we had a lot of chats and discussions around SEO, where we found that we wanted to discuss something that is very new, at least to you guys, not that much for us, but it's about holistic SEO, right, Maeva? Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this today because as we're digging deeper and deeper into how people are understanding SEO and the way that they do it and why it's frustrating them, um, I think it's really important that we talk about how we look at it and how this approach to it is actually delivering tangible business and sales results uh, for B2B SaaS companies that we work with. So uh, definitely is an important thing to talk about. Glad we're doing it. Of course, of course. So, uh, but before we dive in, I just wanted to ask before, uh, before we, we go to that very important topic, um, how is Saster? Because I've been having like very different opinions all over LinkedIn. People saying, oh, it was amazing. I got to meet a lot of LinkedIn friends in, in real life. And then other people saying, mm, it actually wasn't really good. There was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people and you couldn't really like bond or create like really meaningful relationships. So I would like to ask you that were there with Pilar last week. How was it? So I, I, I think with everything in life, it is what you make of it. Um, so I think it's really challenging to go to big conferences. I think there was 10,000 people there. So if you're just walking around the stands or going to the talks and you're like, oh God, how do I talk to people? Then it's really hard to to do it that way. So you either have to put yourself out there <laughs> and just try to start conversations anyway, even though it can be pretty awkward. I actually enjoyed it. I was able to meet a lot of new people. And the way that I did that was with something called Brain Dates. It's a company mm -hmm. that I think goes to many conferences. I already did some Brain Dates in Saster in June here in Barcelona. Um, and you kind of set a topic and you can either have it with a group or one-on-one. -on -one. And me and Pilar were doing that the whole time. Like we had so many brain dates every day and I managed to meet a lot of really cool people that way. And then of course I did meet a lot of my LinkedIn friends in real life, which was really cool because we're walking by like, Hey, I know you. <laughs> um, and it's, it's just so much better to be face to face. So I enjoyed it for those reasons. Of course, walking around in the stands, it's like a war zone. So many people are trying to pitch to you. Everybody's trying to, everybody you're walking, you're like, Exactly. Watch out because they're coming up. They're like, hey, hey, have you heard about our product? <laughs> and about half of them were, you know, SaaS, SaaS expense management tools. It was really hard. And then just, just walking through the stalls, it's so hard to even understand what some of them do. Um, you know, they're like, we help you grow your, grow your SaaS. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like grow my staff? Like the number of team members? Are you growing my revenue? Are you growing? What are you growing? Um, yeah, like everyone's trying to grow their stuff. Like. Yeah, so <laughs> it was a little confusing that way, but I think that's just the nature of conferences. People are going to try to pitch to you. Everybody there is tr trying to sell. And at the end of the day, it is what you make of it. So you kind of have to decide, have a plan for how you're going to meet people. <laughs> and yeah, if you're very introverted, it's more of a challenge. I'm I'm a little bit uh, a little bit of both. So yeah, I'm my I'm too, and I'm I'm an ambivert as well. Yeah. I like I never know if I'm an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert, but I guess that's just an ambivert. Yeah, actually, they said it, there's 
it's like a spectrum. So you aren't really one or the other. It's just you are more or less of one yeah. another. We are right in the middle, probably. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's nice. Today I'm going to Sastok, Lisbon. So nice. I'm pretty excited about that. Like this events in real life coming up again. So I'm like really excited there. Oh, Which yeah. Is- yeah, Sastock is cool. I went also to the Sastock Barcelona local a few months ago. They're doing another one next week in Barcelona, and we have some team members going. Unfortunately, right. I can't go because I'll, well, it's not unfortunate. I'm going to Macedonia to speak at a conference, the All Web conference. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have fun there. And it's good to yeah. meet other SaaS people, kind of get into that world and make friends. Why not? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Of course. So, I'm going to let you know all about it on the next episode, probably. (laughs) Love it. But today, let's talk right now about holistic SEO. Why holistic SEO? What is the difference between like regular SEO and holistic SEO? So I think that the issue with SEO is that people see it as a box to check, or it's just like doing SEO, whatever this technical magic is, add a couple of things in the meta descriptions, uh, write X amount of blog posts around top keywords that you found that your competitors are ranking for or that have a certain number of search volume. Uh, And it's all about traffic and rankings. So when we look at holistic SEO, when we talk about that, how we see it differently is, first of all, SEO is a part of your overall growth and sales strategy. It's not a box to check. It's not a thing that you do once to your website or even a thing that you do ongoing to your website, but that's just technical stuff or that's only focused on traffic. Um, SEO should be a business strategy. It's a it's deciding that your website is now going to be an organic generator of highly qualified leads. And it's not only generating those leads, but it's helping push them down the pipeline because it's educating them and you are actually capturing them at every part of your buyer's journey. Another way that I like to say this is holistic SEO or the kind of SEO that we do here at Flying Cat Marketing is not doing SEO or creating content for SEO. It's actually creating conversion assets and educational assets that are then distributed through search so that your buyers can be educated by you at any part of their buying journey. And they can also convert through that. So everything else that we're doing, which is technical, off-page, UX, all those other things that we're doing is removing the barrier that might be there from people finding your content and converting eventually and being part of that journey. With social, it's a little different because A, people aren't searching. um, But if you build enough, big enough following and you engage, then people will see the content. But with search, they have to be looking for that thing that you're creating. So we want to make sure that we have an asset that addresses every potential part of the buyer's journey and that they're able to find it. So ranking is as important in that sense as in we want to rank highly for this uh, very relevant content. But the, but the point of it is the content and the end conversion and the, the journey that we are assisting them in. So another way that we look at holistic SEO is that the website is like a living thing, um, just like a, a human, for example, who needs a lot of different parts of their lives addressed to be to feel fulfilled you need to go to the gym you need to go out and see your friends you need to have your personal growth uh, you need to have your mental health all of those things are important for a fulfilled human being and the same thing is important for a website to flourish organically you do need to have content that's relevant for your audience but you also need to have the technical flow moving well. You need to communicate with Google, not have those barriers, not have indexing or crawling issues. And all those technical things are very important because you need to be able to get that content out there. It needs to be found on search. So those would be barriers that you want to remove. And then, of course, you need it in if we're talking about spiritual spirituality, when we're referring to humans, for example, you need the stuff that you're doing 
the things that you're distributing through search needs to be aligned with your overall business objectives and goals. It can't be stuff that you do for SEO. You're not doing it for SEO. You are using SEO to reach a business goal. Uh, SEO is the vehicle for that. It's not the ultimate objective. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused is that they refer to content for SEO or doing SEO for SEO or, or trying to achieve SEO growth. I know that we're called the SEO growth podcast. And what we mean by that is growth of your business, not growth of SEO, because what is growth of SEO? It's, mm. it's, you're just ranking more or you're better optimized, but for what? So it's really thinking about what is the end goal and how are you then using search engines as a vehicle to get there? Yeah, totally. Um, the the other day I was listening to this podcast by a very, very big company and they were saying that uh, the first um, person, like marketing person they would hire would be SEO because why do you want to, why would you want to rank first on Google? And I'm like, no, well, wait, that's not that's SEO. Not the like, like not the, that's not the point. Like you're doing, you want to rank first because you're going to get a better audience because you're going to reach your customer, your audience, and then they will convert. So actually the end goal is conversion and revenue. We're not just doing it because we like to see uh, our results first in Google. That's just an indicator. Yeah. I mean, you could rank first for anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't mean that it's relevant to your business. So you could rank first for any kind of keyword. Uh, if you're focusing on rankings, that doesn't necessarily translate into business results. And yeah, a lot of people say that. I've seen people write whole articles about why I'm not focusing on SEO. It's because everybody has hyped up ranking number one as if that's going to drive the business. Well, no. First of all, why would you only want to rank for one keyword? That's not the goal. You want to uh, be there for every part of the buyer's journey. And also the goal of SEO isn't to rank number one. It's to have a, an impact on your business and be there during the buyer's journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I like that uh, you say to us that like holistic SEO is a mindset to have, to embody. And when you say that it's a mindset, can you, can you explain a bit more about that? Because it's really interesting to have that mindset when you are, you know, distributing your content through SEO? Why do you say that it's a mindset? So, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of people who I, I just saw recently a post on LinkedIn that was like, backlinks are the biggest driver of SEO uh, success or results. And then somebody else is going to respond, no, content is the driver of SEO success. And the mindset is that there's not one thing that you're going to do, not one kind of tactic or deliverable that you're going to do whether you scale it, whether you do it quickly, uh, whether you do it in very high volumes, there's not one of those things that you're going to do that's going to turn SEO into a business growth channel. The thing that having, sorry, I'm, I'm just collecting my thoughts here. What you need to approach it as is that you're trying to achieve an end goal. You're trying to achieve an objective. And then you have to prioritize the way to get there and ignore all of that other shiny stuff that you might be attracted to. So the mindset is that uh, SEO as a vehicle or channel for growth is something that you need to nurture. You need to test and see where things need attention. And it's not always going to be the same thing. It's not always going to be content. It's not always going to be backlinks. And even when you're looking at those tactics as a part of an overarching strategy, more content is not a thing that's going to help or more backlinks isn't the thing that's going to help. It's the the order in which you are publishing certain kind pages of content. What pages do you need right now to build this asset? What order do they need to be created in? What are you building? At the end of the day, you're trying to build this asset that's made up of a lot of content pieces and you're adding to it and you're adding to it and you're making it more powerful, more sturdy, more useful. And um, just looking at 
one kind of aspect or one tactic of it is never going to f- be the answer for somebody. So I say it's a mindset. And I know that we are um, also going to be touching upon our, our framework, foundations, yeah. growth and scale, which is holistic SEO at the end of the day. And that mindset is looking at all of the opportunities that are out there and then ignoring everything else and mm-hmm. only doing what's most important. Have Have you read The Art of War? Yes. Yes, I have. So I'm very inspired by the way that this guy strategizes war. I'm not pro-war or pro No, but it's about strategy. It's about, <laughs> it's about strategy. strategy. War is just the yeah. way that he explains it. Exactly. So this guy, Sun Tzu, yeah. um, got in charge of this army and they were fighting. Oh, man, I'm going to confuse them. I think he was with Wu and they were fighting Chu. Uh, kingdoms. I may have those reversed. But basically, he was like, okay, so these guys, the Chu kingdom, I think the one that they were fighting, they represented at that time, they had they had already taken over so much of, of China at the time, that they basically owned half of China, and they were on a mission to dominate the rest. And so there was this one battle where he really wanted to, the one he became famous for, the Battle of Boju, I want to I want to say. I really hope I'm not butchering all of this. Um, but he really wanted, he, basically, he, he was tasked with winning this battle. And he said, okay, so what's the goal here at the end of the day? The goal is to take over the capital. What's the goal? Um, mm-hmm. So they have an army that's literally 10 times bigger than ours. Like the forces that are coming here, they are 10 times bigger than us. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have to be really smart about what we're doing. And he said, um, actually, what I'm going to try to do is the least amount of fighting possible in order to win this war. What's the smallest things that we can do in order to win this war? So his metric, he didn't get confused. He didn't confuse the metric with the goal. His metric, the thing he was going after wasn't how many dead bodies can I get at the end of the day? It was, can we take over the capital, which is the most important thing. And I think this is where a lot of people in strategy get, they start to get confused with the goal and the metric and the metric suddenly becomes the goal when it's not. Um, so he did a bunch of tricky schemes, basically like getting them all to go somewhere else, like pretending that they were going to fight them over here. Meanwhile, when he got every, all the, the army to go over there, they went in and took over the capital and they won. And there were way less casualties than it, if it could have been through any other strategist, let's say. So I kind of looking at it at the same way as in. Uh, everybody here is just trying to compete on volume. Like, let's publish more blog posts. Let's build more backlinks. But all that's going to do is exhaust your resources and you have no idea if you're doing the right thing. So another thing in the art of war, one of his rules is know yourself and know your enemy. Know your own weaknesses and strengths. Know your enemy's weaknesses and strengths. So it's the same. You want to analyze what's going on 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 the competitor's websites. What's the total addressable market? What are my weaknesses? Where do I stand? What are the smallest lever what are the levers that i can pull that are the smallest amount of effort that are going to have the biggest impact and literally ignore everything else and only do those things and that's how you're going to get the fastest to the goal and you're not going to get distracted by all of those other metrics that somehow always end up becoming the goal and so even the worst case is it's the outputs that become the goal so imagine if he came into the war and was like all right so stab numbers <laughs> or whatever yeah. like this is what we're going after they could be doing whatever. They might not even be killing the other people. Um, so it's really just keeping focused and and then moving in the smartest way toward that. Yeah, like the analogy there, because it's very like visual. I could actually like have this story in my mind, but related to how we do strategy here. And although it all sounds very nice and and very clear, like, how do you actually execute on that? How do you bring it to real actions? How do you bring it to SEO? Yes. So you're going to love my answer. It depends. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no. Yeah. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Some ways. Yeah. Um, so the f- what you want to do first is understand what's going on in the industry and forecast what the possibility is. So basically, you can take the total traffic of all of the websites uh, 
that are competing for your audience. So that might be direct competitors that are selling the same thing as you, but also indirect competitors that might not be selling the same thing as you, but they're definitely targeting the same audience and are going to have a lot of the same keywords. So you can use tools like SimilarWeb or Ahrefs to find out what traffic they get. And it's going to be an estimate. It's not going to be totally accurate because you can't get access to their Google search console, but it's going to be pretty close. So looking at all of those, you can take an average and say, okay, these guys are the best of the best. This is their audience. This is what's possible. So you know what's possible. And then you can divide that by the number of pages indexed that they have. And you say, okay, this is how much that they're publishing. Like this is how much traffic they eventually get, like for each page, for example. Mm -hmm. So you, then you need to look at yourself and say, okay, this is how far behind I am. This is the resources that we have that we can actually do. Um, and so if we were able to do this, it, we could set a goal for however long it's going to take. 12 months, two years, three years, whatever, set that goal. And then you start to work your way backwards from that to say, this is the kind of things that we need to do. Now, when it comes to content selection, again, you don't want to focus only on search volume because you're not, you don't care about search volume because search volume is a dumb metric to select your keywords on. Uh, and we could talk about that in another episode. So stay tuned. Um, but you want to actually build your way up. So the goal is really to get the right kind of content in front of the uh, in front of the eyes of the right people as quickly as possible. Um, because the quicker that people start seeing it, they start to get more clicks. Uh, you start to get more traffic, more engagement. People start exploring your website more, first of all. Second of all, Google starts to get more signals that people are interested in what you're publishing and you start to build that topical authority faster. So the goal is to get there as quickly as possible. So what you want to start is find the most relevant use case um, that you of your product that you offer and start building out a topic cluster around that. But you also want to find one that is less competitive. So find the sweet spot between most relevant and not as competitive. And you want to focus on really long tail keywords first um, and as well as bottom of the funnel as well first, and then build your way up up the funnel and focus on one use case, one topic cluster at a time so that you start building out that topical authority. Um, other things that you need to do, and this depends on um, your type of website, archetype. I like to put them in, in archetypes. There are different archetypes of, of websites that you might be in because you might already have a lot of content published or you might a lot have done a lot of stuff already. So there might be other quick wins that you would need to do first instead of creating new content. So um, this is in the foundations phase of foundations, growth and scale, which is the framework that that we follow here, our proprietary trade trademark uh, framework. Um, but in foundations, you want to see, do I already have content that exists that I can reoptimize? Uh, do I have any severe technical issues that are preventing people from seeing this great content that I've created? Um, do I, is my conversion rate good like some that's the first thing you want to look at you don't want to start creating new content when you have a bunch of content like what is the conversion rate like on the content that i already have am i missing ctas so many people um so many companies that we start working with they have a bunch of content they say seo is not converting and then we go on the pages they don't even have any ctas on those pages so how is it going to convert so <laughs> you know fixing those kind of things first seeing where you can fix click-through rates pages that you can prune so you can um you know consider the crawl budget that Google has and make sure that you're only giving it the best pages. Do all of those things first. In the growth stage, you can start adding things. I think the problem, mm -hmm. the mistake that a lot of people make is they start with growth, even though they haven't fixed foundations. And they say, okay, new content, new backlinks, more, 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 more. Um, when they could just fix some things. If they're getting 20,000 monthly visitors and they want to add more stuff, but imagine if they just increase their CTR by 1% or increase their conversion rate by 1%. If they just looked at that, that would be a way quicker win than creating new things. So you want to do it in the right order um, and make yeah. sure that you're not trying to jump too fast. Sorry. Yeah, otherwise you are just like everything that you create on top of that is eventually not going to perform as it should or yeah. as it could because the foundations are not there. Exactly. And that's why you need to fix that first. All right, exactly. so after growth, after you start adding things, so let's say backlinks or, or, or content, 
Yeah, so you do you do that for a while. Educational content, you keep, keep building out your topic clusters. And importantly, I don't think this is news to anybody, but uh, obviously you you don't just publish and forget about it. You keep reading the data. People do this all the time with ads, but for some reason they don't do it with their SEO content. You know, you run an ad, you get the data back, you update the ad, you republish, yeah. get more data back, you make changes, et cetera. It's very, very common practice in ads and everywhere else. But for some reason with SEO, they don't do it as much, but you're supposed to do the same thing. So you, it's just that the feedback loop is longer. You have to wait months rather than however long they wait with ads. So yeah. you publish, you wait, you get the data back, you re-edit, you re-update that content and you just keep it alive and start to just really understand what's working, what's not working. Um, and then when you move forward with scale, so scale is, it really depends on the product and what the scaling opportunities are. Um, a lot of time programmatic SEO works really well. That pro A lot of programmatic SEO projects can work with almost any company because you could do comparison pages programmatically, for example, or list of types of types of tools or competitor versus competitor. A lot of those, if the tools are very similar, they can be done programmatically as well. When I say programmatically for those who not don't know is you you know you create a template you add some variables in there and then you use code to generate a bunch of new pages so it's really high impact low effort but you don't want to start doing those kind of things until you validated what you're doing in foundations and in growth and that needs to work that needs to be ringing in quality leads otherwise you're just scaling something that is probably not worth the effort mm -hmm. good and i imagine that after you do that you still want to keep like, um, how would you say, like maintaining everything that oh, you yeah. built of course. all the time, like checking on the foundations, checking out the technical things are there to let the content perform, trimming out the, the weeds out of your content to optimize it. And you're just still testing how programmatic SEO is doing. And of course, seizing more opportunities because there might be, it might be the case that new opportunities come up because the industry, yes. it changes all the time, it moves. It's, like you said, it's a living, it's a living thing. Yeah, I think that, oh God, I'm going to butcher this stat, but uh, Google said that about 10 or 15% of actual keywords that are queries are being searched for for like the first time every day. Like uh, 10 or 15% of the queries that they find every day on Google are brand new queries because there are new trends, there are new, there's new terminologies. And you don't wanna always jump on the trends, but if there's a new terminology in your industry that's starting to become more commonplace, more used, that didn't exist before, um, that's search potential that you do, and it's relevant to your product, of course, that's search potential that you do wanna capture. Yeah. And it's, it would be easier to rank for it at that point if you're on top of what's happening. Yeah, makes sense. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot. I love this concept. I like. I really, I really like it because it it's actually true. What with what happens? It's not like you just do SEO and you leave your page there and then oh, it's not performing. Well, of course not. Like, you yeah. need to you need to keep um, working on it. Yeah. So well, I think it's very it's very interesting and and the way we are doing it it's it's very how to say very organized and planned and very um we have all these workflows and processes that we would love to share with you yes. at some point so stay tuned in our in our LinkedIn page um but that will be for another another episode. time another episode <laughs> because now we are out of time and well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been, I hope this will help a lot of people out there, um, you know, measuring rankings and traffic. Uh, <laughs> yes, please don't. Uh, listen I to mean, you can, you can. It's a secondary, it's a leading indicator though, just not the main one. Yeah, I mean, I mean that aspect, of course. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank you so much for listening to us. Next episode, we will be uh, talking about measuring your SEO results. So stay tuned. Cool. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and yes, of course. Um, so, Maeva, do you want to share your LinkedIn handle for people to reach out to you, connect with you? Yes. So either search for my name, Maeva Cifuentes, 
or it's uh, Maiva Everywhere. That's my handle everywhere. <laughs> um, just M A E V A everywhere. So you can find me there on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Probably if you're interested in SEO, just just look for me on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the rest is less interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's my handle. Why don't you Perfect. share yours? Yeah, and I'm Mila Divela, all networks as well. Uh, but actually, LinkedIn is the only one that I'm very active on. So yeah, connect with me on LinkedIn. That would love it. <laughs> and of course, our LinkedIn page, Flame Cup Marketing. You can follow us there and stay tuned. Love all it. right. Thank you, Mila. So, thank you so much. And yes, send us your questions for the next episode uh, that is going to be about measuring your SEO results. And we will answer them live. I mean, my is going to. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, all right. You Thanks. sign it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> you, yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much and see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Have a nice day.